How to find and land clients. The only way to get paid work is to show your past work, and the only way to really learn something is to do something. Executing on what you're reading gives you experience, which is why you need to do real-world projects throughout this course. This was my first website. Embarrassing. I know. I built it for my father. He didn't pay me. The only thing he paid for was the cost of building the website, which was around $125. And I don't blame him for not paying me. It was not good. No bueno. Um, I recommend not charging for your first website because not only will this be a hard sell, but it's also risky because you may not be good like I wasn't at developing WordPress websites at first. Of course, if you purchase the VIP course, though, then you don't have to worry about this probably because I'll be checking all of your work before you deliver it back to your client, making sure it's up to par. If you do decide to charge, unless you're well-versed in WordPress and web design already, I'd charge no more than between $200 and $500. If you do decide to charge, you best deliver a quality website buyer before a deadline. You have to be reliable in the real world. I cannot stress this enough, which leads me to two tips. Tip one, don't be picky at first. Take whatever gigs you can get at first. These are just stepping stones. You don't want to take on the bigger gigs yet because you only get one chance to make a good first impression. You're much better off getting hands-on experience driving real results for real businesses or yourself, even if they are small businesses or startups. Which leads me to tip two. Have a personality. I absolutely love this quote by Neil Gaiman. Uh, it was in his uh, commencement speech. I'm not sure for which university. You get work however you get work, but people keep getting freelance work and more and more of today's world is freelance because their work is good and because they're easy to get along with and because they deliver work on time. You don't even need to do all three. Two out of three is fine. People will tolerate how unpleasant you are if your work is good and if you deliver on time. People will forgive the lateness of your work if it's good and they like you. And you don't have to be as good as everyone else if you're always on time and it's always a pleasure to hear from you. I put the link in the bio to that commencement speech. It's, it's pretty damn good. So now it's time to find a project to work on. With those tips in mind, here are a few ideas for your first website project. Option one, fam, friends, or coworkers. Why not build a website for one of them? Reach out to your entire network, starting with family and friends and expanding to Facebook, LinkedIn, email acquaintances, wherever. It's a hell of a lot easier to talk someone you already know into letting you create a website for them than it is to talk some ranger, random stranger into it. Ask your parents who they know. Ask your teachers who they know. Ask your friends if their parents have a small business. Just ask. Ask everyone. Listen in Starbucks. Do you know how many opportunities have come to me in Starbucks before? I'm not even lying. A lot. So if no opportunities arise from option one, you're going to have to do some highly selective cold outreach, which leads us to option two, which is my absolute favorite option, um, as you can see with the emojis. So this is my favorite option because it gives you the most creative freedom. You won't have a client holding you back. Clients, sometimes you'll be surprised how many people have bad taste and they'll want this like ugly ass website. And it's so frustrating sometimes. So this is my favorite option because it gives you the most creative freedom. And I know I've in the past, I've been held back by clients. And if you want to like move a lot faster and get results faster, then it might just be more beneficial to do something for yourself. If you have the opportunity, like the time and the resources to do something for yourself. So you could invest in purchasing website resources, um, which is just, you know, a minimal upfront investment, um, then create just whatever type of website you want and eventually sell it. If you drive a lot of traffic to it, um, you might get a nice like chunk of money. For instance, Muesli, which it's like a public a design publication, Google it, and it got acquired by Envision for like, I don't know how much, but these little sites get acquired now by these big, you know, conglomerates and uh there's definitely opportunities to be made there if you drive relevant traffic uh, somewhere. So at first, your website could just be like a simple blog with some like main pages like the about page, start here, etc. Like a pa smart passive income, for instance. Check it out. Um, then as you grow your audience, you can monetize it by like selling the site, creating an online shop or selling sponsored posts. There's a shit ton of ways to make money online. So how do you decide what to build if you decide you want to go this route, which I highly recommend? 
Well, I'd say choose something you already know well or want to learn a lot about. Um, make sure you're you're knowledgeable on the topic, or you're or at the very least be interested in learning more about whatever the topic is you choose because you're going to have to write about it a lot to grow it. So choose a specific niche that's different from everything else out there. Make sure it's like different enough. Research the competitive landscape. Go to the third page of Google. Like it's <laughs> do it. Um, it, can you do, can you actually do something that's better than what's currently out there? How T- explain how it's going to be better and why, um, and then make it better. And you're going to want to choose a topic that people are actually searching for. You can um, you can find this out by using tools like Moz, Ahrefs, and like Google Trends. Um, just see what's out there and then like you know look at the look at how many search results there are any of them good I wouldn't even care about the number of search results I'd care more about the quality of the content eventually like I mentioned like a billion times now you could sell your website on Flippa or I always hate saying that word uh or another similar site like Shopify's exchange marketplace or um empire flippers you know you can google like website websites for sale or something and it should come up or website marketplace um so yeah flippa is a marketplace where people sell domain names and live websites and apps in the resources below i link to like a bunch of them so you can check them out so i've never personally sold a website or a domain on flippa but i am very intrigued by it so if you market your website well on top of that you could charge even more for it because the more traction it has like the more money you're gonna get and if you want some ideas, um, I would check out detailed.com and gaps.com. I link to those below too. Um, this guy's blog is like so good. You'll find a lot of ideas on there, especially in, on gaps.com. Um, detailed has gotten a little lame lately. So maybe you want to look at their like be, their posts from in the beginning. So let's look at option number three make a website pro bono. I like this option a lot too. Um, most charities have bad websites. So find a charity or cause that's like near and dear to your heart and reach out to them. So for my, uh, fake example, I love, I'm like absolutely love animals and it makes me so sad when people give them away because I just think it's so sad. So, um, the local animal shelters have terrible websites. Like look at this thing. Ugh, face palm. <laughs> so if I had little to no experience and I wanted to build one of them, a beautiful website, this is how I would do it. First, I'd, I'd go to Google um, and look for something like local animal shelters um, near me or local animal shelters 33062, which is my zip code, um, you know, something like that. Then I'd go to the more places button because at the when you Google stuff like this, it'll obviously show um, the, the Google My Businesses. And so I'll click the more places that's highlighted in the screenshot and uh, look for the ones that don't have a website because those are the ones that need the love the most. And it's easier than um, a redesign, which I usually don't enjoy doing redesigns. So if I go here, I notice that a few of them don't have a website. If you like look in that highlighted uh, column, there's a few of them. So what I do next is I wouldn't just, you know, automatically call them and decide that um, this is who I'm going to build a website for. First, you know, I'd click on the website and uh, or click on the search result and then I'd right click or I'd highlight the name and right click uh, search Google for Noah's Ark Inc. And like for this one, I had to add like Noah's Noah's Ark Pompano or like Noah's Ark Animal Shelter because there was a lot of different results for Noah's Ark. Um, I guess it's a popular name. So I eventually um, didn't, I didn't find a website um, for them, but I know because I live not far from here that Noah's Ark is closed. So you want to like make sure that you're not like reaching out to closed businesses. That's why you're Googling. So you're looking for if they're closed or if they actually have a website that's just not listed on the um, on the Google My Business. So 
this one has a website. Don't get fooled like me. And you'll see that like Mark's Animal Rescue actually has a website, but because it doesn't have directions for some reason, I guess it doesn't have an address. Um, it, yeah, it just, it looks like if you look quickly that it's just uh, more directions, but they actually have a website. Finally, like I scroll down and I find one that looks like it doesn't have a website. So I looked through the search results and I'm able to find the phone number of the shelter. Now, if I was serious about this, I'd obviously call or if I found an email, I'd email first because I, I'm right better than I talk. Um, I'd say something along the lines of, hi there, my name is Lauren Holiday, and I've been dying to help abandoned pets in some way. I'm emailing you because I want to give back by helping the economy shelter get more foot traffic and more dogs adopted faster. I'd love to build you an easy to manage website for absolutely zero cost. If you're available, I could swing by your office so you could ask me any questions and I can learn a bit more about your organization. Forgot a comma. Either way, good or bad, look forward to hearing from you, Lauren. And reread your emails because now I'm looking and I have a compound sentence without uh, without a proper comma. Uh, that bothers me. Um, so then I'd wait to hear back and I'd follow up if I didn't. Now, option number four, make a website for a startup. This option I'm kind of keen on, but... I could see it working and I could see it not working. Like I wouldn't, I would stay away from like funded startups because they're probably going to spend a lot of money on a website and um, it will be like just a really hard sell. But if you are, um, but new startups on the other hand, without budgets pop up literally every day. So if you check places like product hunt or beta list um, or angel list, like you can look up startups that have no, a bad or no website and then reach out to them. You could find their um, email address with something like Email Hunter and you should be able to find like a Twitter account maybe um, and tweet them so you can send them a DM or, you know, you can DM anyone on Instagram, LinkedIn, in mail, um, you know, just think creatively. Um, don't just, you know, not find an email and just give up. Option five. Make a local business a website. So this is going to be similar to the nonprofit situation and just the process is going to look a lot similar. So let's get started. First, we would pick a vertical to focus on. By vertical, I mean something like dentists, dry cleaners, hair salons, you know, the same type of business. So once you choose that, I'm my example is going to be a dry cleaner just because that was my dad's and it's just, it was just an example at the top of my head. So first pick something you can get excited about. And by, ex you know, like even though dry cleaning is, doesn't excite me, I could still get excited about it because I saw the opportunity to like make more money, like for my dad to be able to make more money. And like, I saw just so much opportunity because he offered a good service. And, you know, I started thinking creatively with the technology and like, oh, what if he partnered with Uber? Like, um, then he could have on-demand delivery and like, you know, outdo everyone, all the other like uh, delivery services. And the wheels started turning and I started thinking of all these other things. So like, you want to, even though like dry cleaning isn't exciting, find a way to get excited about what you're going to do. For instance, like I could never get excited about like, don't take this the wrong way, but I don't understand like uh, environmental science type topics or I just am not interested. I should say I'm not interested enough to learn about them. So I would never pick like, you know, a biology lab or like quest diagnostics or something like that. You know, like I just... I would pick something that, that I, I see opportunity in. Pick something related to you. So what I mean by this is, and this is optional, but it's good if you can. I would pick something like, um, so I picked dry cleaners because that's relatable to me. I can say to these dry cleaners, oh, hey, my dad owns two for the last like 50, 100 years. Um, I know a lot about this. I used to work in his store you know, find a way to translate who you are and what you've done to uh, this business because that'll be an easier sell. Step two, Google. So Google, just like we did for the last uh, nonprofit, we'll do, um, you know, like dry cleaners near me, local dry cleaners, dry cleaners, insert city name nearest you. 
Um, and that should pull up, you know, the same thing that we saw in the nonprofits. So I click the more places button again at the um, bottom of the SERP and look for ones without a website because those are the ones, you know, that need it. I prioritize the businesses that don't have a website again, but have good reviews because this likely means that they care about their reputation and are a good business. You don't want to make a website for a bad company. That's like using your powers for evil. So again, I'd Google and this time I'd Google the specific business names um, based on the criteria, you know, I mentioned for the nonprofits just to double check they don't have a website and to make sure they're not closed. You could also, of course, search Facebook for local businesses with with a, uh, with a Facebook page, but that don't have a website. That way you could just message them right through Facebook, but it's also likely that they don't know how to check the messages. <laughs> Step three, reach out. Email, phone, in person, in that order. So I would start with email because you can track it and gauge their interest in your offering based on how many times they opened the email and clicked. So like try and include a link or something so you can maybe uh, check, but I guess it's fine if they're just opening it, you'll know too. So here's a list of email trackers. I use HubSpot, but it's kind of pricey. Um, there's also Boomerang, which is free. Astro, which is free. MailTrack, I'm not sure. Yesware. And if you Google email trackers, even more will come up. Um, all are good and viable options. Just pick one and in, definitely install before emailing because you want to know if people are opening your email and actually interested. I've also, FYI, written a definitive guide to how, how to write damn good emails. So if you uh, want to read that, that would probably be beneficial to you. Um, it's also linked to below. Here's what I would say. Hi, Paul. My name's Lauren Holiday. I graduated from Gibbons with Ashley, but we haven't talked in a while. Otherwise, I would have emailed her. I've also been a customer for a while and send friends your way all the time. I've been dying to design a dry cleaning website and notice you don't have one. I'd love to make you a website that increases the number of new customers and shows up above all your competitors on the first page of Google. Because I'm just getting started in web design, I'm willing to do this for you free of charge. The only thing I ask is if you're happy with the end result, please give me a stellar testimonial. Of course, I'd also appreciate any word of mouth referrals. Can we set up a call next Tuesday or whenever works for you if you're interested? Look forward to hearing from you, Lauren. Smile face. I think the smile face adds a nice touch. So what I did here was the first uh, paragraph, you'll notice I related myself somehow to this person. Uh, so they kept reading, at least. Then I uh, tell them, you know, what I'm trying to do for them, not for me, what I will do for them without, you know, expecting anything in return. So I'm providing value first. And then um, I like, you know, insinuate how I don't have experience, but I don't blatantly say it. I dress it up and I say, because I'm just getting started, you know, that could mean anything. And you literally address the topic of not looking for payment. It's not like you're trying to like scam them or something. And then I, at when we say, or when I say, can we set up a call next Tuesday or whenever works for you? I give them a specific call to action. You don't want to just say, you always want to have a call to action at the end of your email. And then I say, look forward to hearing from you. Like, I just expect them to write back, which has been like proven in studies to work uh, to make people email you back. And then I always include a smile face just because that's my personality. And I try to inject that in all my stuff. That's me. So if you love them too, include them. Of course, know when not to include them. Like if you're talking to like a stodgy old person who doesn't want to who doesn't have a personality then maybe you should include the smile face because they might just like not like you for it <laughs> I don't know yay we're done with the first section of the wordpress course I'm so excited I hope you are too uh so now what we're on to the next one thanks jay-z peace out